Hello and welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name is Dennis Van Kampen and in this video tutorial series about SAP HANA administration, we will be talking about the command line tool HTTP SQL or HTTP SQL if you wish, the SAP HANA database interactive terminal. I'm connected here to a Windows computer and on this computer the SAP HANA client is installed. So if we go down the path we can open the HTTP client directory, shift and control or right click with your mouse so we get the context menu and we can then select open command window here. Then with the dir command we can list the executables. I'm using star.exe here to filter and number two on our list is HTTP SQL. We can just run it. Welcome to the SAP HANA database interactive terminal type backslash h for help or backslash q to quit. OK, backslash h. Here we have our help. Most of the commands are mnemonics, so we have q for quit, c for connect. If you feel like typing, you could enter the whole command, which would be a bit silly, of course, but when using HTTP SQL in a script file, this might, in some cases, improve the readability of the script. So your colleagues will be informed about what's going on. OK, so how do we connect? You provide the instance number, dash i, the host name and port, dash n, that's for node. We're assuming that HANA runs as a distributed system. And if you connect to a multi-tenant database system, you need to provide the database with dash d. And then username and password dash u and dash p. These are all in lowercase and alternatively you can connect with a user store key with dash u in uppercase. The user store key will contain username, password for each system that you want to connect to and we'll look into that in another video. OK, then we have backslash di for disconnect. Assuming you're going to connect to another system right away Otherwise, backslash Q for quit would work as well. Then we have a number of switches or toggles or flags, something that you can turn on or off. Here we have multi lines, backslash MU. When off, the contents of the query buffer is sent to the server when you enter the enter or return key. Typically, you want to have multi lines on so you can send a number of statements in one go in which case you would need to use a statement separator. Default here is the semicolon. And in some cases, you might want to change this. For example, when you are entering a store procedure or a create statement of a trigger, which contains SQL statements, which are already terminated by a semicolon. We will look into this in a separate video as well. You can see that there are a number of flags related to the multi-line mode. We have backslash P for print, backslash R for reset, E for edit, and G for go, or as mentioned, the semicolon to execute. Then we have the A for the auto commit toggle. This flag, just like multi line, also exists in SAP HANA Studio, both default to auto commit. This applies, of course, to insert, update, delete SQL commands that modify data. Should you have some business logic where you want to execute a number of statements as a group and then commit as a whole, you could use this. Backslash mode defaults to internal. Normal would be a better word, I guess. You can also set it to SAP R3 to change some of the semantics, as it's called. For example, how nils or empty strings or trailing spaces are handled. This is typically used with the SAP NetWeaver database shared library, DBSL. I cannot think of many use case scenarios outside of SAP support for this flag, but as it's here, this is the purpose it serves. Backslash CL client info allows you to tag your client. Very useful when debugging. HANA Studio, for example, identifies each request as a request sent from HANA Studio. Moving on, we have backslash PS for prepared statements. 
Prepared statements are sort of like templates. Say you need to insert a number of values into a table using a complex query with lots of joins, etc., and repeat this over and over again. Using a prepared statement allows for the execution plan, the optimal way how to execute the query, to be already calculated and pre-formatted in a way and all that's needed at runtime is the actual value to be inserted, the bind variable. It's a very common way to speed up the execution time in databases. There's nothing specifically related to HANA here. However, in some cases, you need to switch prepared statements off. For example, if you want to execute an MDX statement, the OLAP side of HANA. Same thing happens under the hood in SAP HANA Studio, switching prepared statements off. It's the same idea. Then we have escape output. This is used for formatting. It removes the double quotes from the result set. So in case you want to copy the output into Excel, for example, there are a number of other flags, as you can see, for formatting. We have a line, pager, and a field separator. These flags are all relevant when you have used the backslash O for output with a file name. Backslash I does the inverse, it's for input, a file with SQL commands, in which case you might need to add the IE flag to specify the encoding if the server is remote and your client uses a different code page. Then finally, we have the backslash S for status and some shorthand commands. Backslash DC to list columns, backslash DT to list tables, and so on. And you can add a pattern to this to do some filtering. It will be translated into a like clause. So let's give this a try. Backslash S. We're getting prompted for a username and a password. And then we get an error. No connection could be made. Does this make sense? Well, yes, it does. We are here on a Windows client, and HTTPSQL has no idea what server we want to connect to. So let's switch to our HANA server. I'm connected here as the SID ADM user, the software owner, the system administration account, H11 ADM in our case, HTTPSQL, same output. It's a great thing, of course. The tool is included with every server installation, and as mentioned, with every client installation. Query status, username, password, and now we can see the host, SID, database name, user, and even the kernel version of the SAP HANA server and the SQL DBC version. That is the database independent layer used by SAP NetWeaver. We have the auto commit setting, local, and the input encoding. So if we copy host and port here and return to our Windows client, backslash C to connect, dash N, and then we paste in hostname and port, enter, username, password, and now we are connected to H11, that's the SID, backslash S, we get the same output, or is it? Well, the HANA kernel is the same, of course, but the SQL DBC version is slightly different, and also the locale, 1252 instead of UTF-8. Very good. Let's try out the shorthand, backslash du. This lists the database users, 16 rows selected. Now, if you have a lot more users, you would need to switch on page scroll. So, backslash pa. No, it's off, so it's on by default. So, we'll enter it again to toggle the switch on. And now, backslash dp gives us the procedure. And then, with the spacebar, we can scroll through the content. Now let's quit and enter HTTPSQL dash question mark. Now we get the different command line options. So the flags you can use when running HTTPSQL from the front, for example, in script files. Again, we have our connect options, instance name, node, database name, user store key, and username password. Obviously, it would be a really bad idea to provide the password on the command line, as anyone looking over your shoulder or reading the history file could read it. So use with care. Much better to use a user store key. Then we have our prepared statements flag again, SQL mode, auto commit. Additionally, 
we can use a file to provide a SAML assertion, encrypt communication, or set SQL DBC connection options, which again is for use with SAP NetWeaver. Dash I, in uppercase I, is for the input file, a file with SQL statements, and dash O, lowercase O, is for the output file. And there's an option to run this silently with dash X. And we can set the command separator with dash C. And the encoding flags, then a whole range of output format options. And this is for reporting, as mentioned. Finally, there are some SSL options, which we will discuss in another video. And then some flags to print out the version, debug information, and a database trace file. As you have guessed by now, HTTP SQL is used a lot by SAP support for Sweet on HANA and BW on HANA cases. Now, where do we find the tool documented? As always, go to help.sap.com, technology platform, and scroll down for the SAP HANA platform. Under system administration, we have our SAP HANA administration guide, and you can open this as a PDF or an HTML. And here we find the SAP HANA HTTP SQL command line reference. In the next video, we will be looking into some use cases for HTTP SQL. Thank you for watching this SAP HANA Academy video.